In this part of the lecture, we will quickly go through the theories of discrete time Bayesian filtering and discrete time Bayesian smoothing. We will keep quite fast phase, but if you're interested in more information, you can go to my web page by googling for my name. You should arrive to this kind of page, and then if you scroll down, you will find the link over here to my book in PDF form. If you click it, you will find the whole book over here. So if you're interested in the details, you can read them here. But during this lecture, I will go through the main ideas very quickly. So let's now go to the basics of discrete time Bayesian filtering. So as we saw already in the last part of the lecture, any continuous discrete state estimation problem where we have an SDE model modeling the dynamics and then measurements are obtained at discrete time instance can be reformulated as a discrete time state space model. So xk here actually denotes x at time tk and the measurements are obtained on the times tk. Now due to Markovianity, so the joint prior distribution of x from 0 to t is equal to the prior distribution of x0 times the product of the transition densities p of xk given xk minus 1. And due to conditional independence of measurements, which we assume the joint likelihood of the measurements or the joint probability density of measurements is given as p of y's from 1 to t given x's from 0 to t is equal to the product of yk given xk over k. So we can now in principle use the Bayes rule to compute the full Potter distribution of x's. So the joint probability density of x's from 0 to t given all the measurements is equal to that joint probability density of measurements given all the x's times the prior distribution of x's divided by normalization constant which is just integral of the top part here. And that can be written down as this kind of expression here. Now this distribution is very high dimensional and in the case of SD is where we consider all times continuously in time this distribution would be infinite. And it's very inefficient to work with explicitly and that's why we have something called filtering theory which tries to do the computations more wisely. The filtering theory utilizes the Markovian structure of the model to efficiently compute this kind of party a posteriors. So we have the filtering distributions p of xk given the measurements from 1 to k. So up to the same kth moment that we are inferring x. And the smoothing distributions are p of xk given y from 1 to t whereas t could be more than k. So we are inferring the state at some k which is in the middle of the measurements. So how does the Bayesian optimal filter or the Bayesian filter look like? So the principle is that we have the prior distribution at hand, then we have the state space model, which consists of the dynamic model and the measurement model, and then we have the measurement sequence. And given this information, we want to compute the filtering distribution. And as already said, in the continuous discrete case with SDE models in the dynamics, we usually have defined so that xk actually is a shorthand notation for x at tk. For sometimes t is from 1 to up to some large t or something like that. Of course, we don't need to have any uniform sampling or anything like that. We can set t's to be anything, or they need to be an increasing sequence. The Bayesian optimal filter is the algorithm which computes, computes the filtering distribution, which was the p x k given y from 1 to k. And the filter is actually a recursion rule for incorporation of the new measurements y k into the posterior that we can obtain from the previous step. So we start from x k minus 1 given y from 1 to k minus 1, and we update that to p of x k given y from 1 to k. So how does the Bayesian filter look like? So assume that we know the posterior distribution of the previous step. So it's p of x k minus 1 given y is from 1 to k minus 1. And now we can form the joint distribution of x k and x k minus 1 given the measurements up to k minus 1. So it ends up being the product of the transition density and the previous posterior distribution because we have the Markovian property. Now integrating over x k minus 1 gives a version of the jackman kolmogorov equation. So the p of x k given the measurements up to k minus 1 is equal to the integral of the dynamic model times the previous posterior distribution and the integral is over x k minus 1. And this is also the prediction step of the optimal filter. Now what we have, so we have the prior distribution from the jackman kolmogorov equation and the measurement likelihood given in the state space model. Now we can use the Bayes rule to compute p of xk given y from 1 to k like this. So first we have a more generic expression where we have a 
use the general Bayes rule, but then the conditional independence reduces this expression to the product of the likelihood times the prediction step result normalized with respect to xk. And this is the update step of the optimal filter. So the optimal filter algorithm or the Bayesian filter looks like this. So we start our recursion, recursion from the prior distribution p of x0 and at its k we do the following. So we do the prediction step which computes p of xk given y's from 1 to k minus 1 by integrating the product of p of xk given xk minus 1 times p of xk minus 1 given the measurements out to k minus 1 over xk minus 1. Then on the prediction step we use the Bayes rule like this. So it's a product of the measurement likelihood and the prediction step result normalized over xk. And that normalization constant turns out to be the integral of the expression involved there. In graphical form we can think that the prediction step looks like what we have on the left. So it propagates the previous posterior distribution with the dynamics forward. So in the SD case this movement is continuous but in our discrete case it just jumps to the next step. In the middle well we have the result of the prediction step and the measurement likelihood and then we combine them to the right hand side result which is the posterior distribution which results from the Bayer rule. So what kind of algorithms do we get? So something called Kalman filter is the classical optimal filter for the linear Gaussian models. So if everything is linear Gaussian I mean the dynamics and the measurement model, the Kalman filter computes the closed form solution to the filtering problem. In the nonlinear case we don't have closed form solutions and the extended Kalman filter is very typical approximation which uses linearization and it's an extension of the Kalman filter to nonlinear models. We have other kinds of extensions, something called unsending Kalman filter uses sigma point transformation or form of numerical integration for approximating the filtering solution. There are also other kinds of approximate Kalman filters, so called gauche hermite and Kupatur Kalman filters are based on other kinds of numerical integrations for approximating the solution to the nonlinear filtering problem. Particle filters use Monte Carlo approximations to represent the filtering distribution. Grid based filters approximate the property the density in the final grid, and then we might have mixed Gaussian approximations which have mixtures of Gaussian distributions which approximate the filtering distributions. So the Kalman filter is the optimal filter or the closed form solution to the optimal Bayesian filtering problem for linear Gaussian problems. So they look like this. So we have a linear Gaussian difference equation as the dynamic model and we measure some linear functions of the state plus some Gaussian noise. So the process noise is Gaussian, measurement noise is Gaussian and A is the transition matrix of the dynamic model. So if you recall from the first part of the lecture this can be, for example, the transition matrix of a linear SDE. So it's the matrix exponential. And then H is the measurement model matrix. So in probabilistic terms, this model is like this. So the transition density is a Gaussian like this, and the measurement model is a Gaussian like this as well. So the equation for the filter R is that we start with M0 and P0, which define the distribution of X0. On the prediction step, we compute predicted mean and covariance using these equations. And on the update step, we compute the posterior mean and covariance using these equations. So the prediction step actually resembles our solution to a generic linear LTI stochastic differential equation. And it is actually that. We can think this as solving the boundary value problem of starting the SDE from, from some distribution and then propagating it forward for delta T. And update step is just the Bayes rule for the linear Gaussian case. Then discrete time based in smoothing. So again, recall what's our problem. So we have a probabilistic state space model. So we have a measurement model yk given xk and the dynamic model which is the transistor density of xk given xk minus 1. And we can assume that we already have the filtering distributions at hand. So we know p of xk given y from 1 to k, at least approximately. Now in the smoothing case we want to have recursive equations for computing the smoothing distributions for all k less than t. So for all x's in the middle of the interval from 1 to t. And it's natural to form a recursion which is a back which goes backwards in time because on the last step the filtering and smoothing distributions are the same. Now how we can derive the equations is that we use the Markov pro properties of the state once again. So the key property is that uh, p of xk given xk plus 1 and all the measurements is equal to p of xk given xk plus 1 
and the measurement is only up to k. So with this result we get that the distribution on the left is equal to the distribution on the bottom right. And the key on the bottom right distribution is that it only depends on the measurements up to time k, not anything from that on. Then we can proceed like this and then integrate both sides over x k plus 1, which turns out to give the recursion for the smoothing distributions. So p of x k given all the measurements is equal to the filtering distribution times the integral of, well we have dynamic model there, the next smoothing distribution and divided by the prediction step and then we integrate the whole thing over x k plus 1. So all the terms are known provided that we are doing our recursion backwards. So the Bayesian optimal smoother then looks like this. So we have a prediction step in principle there unless we have a stored the prediction step result in the optimal filter or Bayesian filter. Then we have the backward recursion which we derived on the previous slide. So we start from the last time step from the filtering distribution and do a backward pass using these equations. That's the whole smoother. So what kind of smoothing algorithm we get? Something called the Ralston Streetable Smoother is the, is the Kalman filter smoothing. So it solves linear Gaussian models exactly. Then we have extended, uh, unscented, statistically linearized and other smoothers which use similar approximations as the corresponding filters. Then we have Gaussian smoothers which use numerical integration such as gauche hermite or Kupater integration. Particle smoothers use Monte Carlo integration as the corresponding particle filters. And then we might have a mixer Gaussian approximation such as Rapalak velized particle smoothers. So let's then look at what uh, the Routen Schiebel smoother looks like. So we have a linear Gaussian model again, which in probabilistic terms was so the transition density and the measurement model is Gaussian. And the Kalman filter, we assume that we have already computed these Gaussian filtering distributions. Then what the Routen Schiebel smoother computes is that it computes the corresponding smoothing distributions which are going to be Gaussian distributions as, as well. So the Ralston Schiebel smoother algorithm is a backward regression like this. So we start from the last time steps, Kalman filter result, and then do this kind of backward pass, which just uh, runs from last k to first k and computes all these mks and pks.